Hey guys, we are here and I've already got some people on. That's awesome. So we're going to get started here. I wanted to come on today and I wanted to talk about the metal or the metal albums rather that came out last year in 2019. So guys, um, thank you for, uh, for being here. I see we got some people on already. That's awesome. I'm just pulling this up on my laptop so that I can read your comments. And of course, I get an ad that pops up first, <laughs> and I actually didn't I actually clicked on the link. Okay, let's move along. Okay, so let me turn my volume down here. There we go. Okay, so you guys are on. Craig, I see you're on the faceless. Good evening. Thanks for joining, guys. I got some notes here for bands. Um, sorry about the link screw up, guys. I I did this before. So I'll tell you this real quick before we get started. Um, I scheduled the live event from my desktop here behind me. And I guess there's, I'm sure there's a way to do this. I just don't know how. <laughs> but so I scheduled the live event on my desktop, but then I'm filming with my iPhone. And somehow those aren't, you know, there's no way to like access that video to kick it off on my iPhone. So that's why I had to delete the old link and give you guys the new link but it sounds like everybody sounds like everybody is uh um, is coming on here so good evening everyone i know for some of you it's good night you know or good nacht if you're in germany <laughs> um but and some of you it might be morning time as well so thank you guys so much for joining uh this is going to be a real cool session here what i um <clears throat> what i learned this morning or really what i've what i've kind of been like thinking about the past couple of weeks is all the new metal albums that are coming out? Uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of new stuff coming out in 2020 already. There's like a there's like a new Delane and there's a new Nightwish. I'm wearing my Delane shirt from the last concert. Um, oh man, the faceless is in bed. Zane Yates, what's up? Is seven? Okay, Zane, you must be in the uh, Eastern time zone here. So guys, 2019 metal bands. All right, so. As you can see on the screenshot, I don't know if you can see it now, but when I when I first put out the video, I think if you if you came here from Facebook, you probably saw the uh, what do you call it the thumbnail, and uh, behind the heart. Thanks for joining, man. I, I, guys, I love your music. By uh, by the way, behind the heart on here, they've got some really cool stuff. So definitely definitely go check them out. Um, I follow you guys on Instagram too, man. So you know definitely you guys have some awesome stuff. Craig, it's 11:30 a.m. in Australia, dude. It's hard to wrap my head around that. Like, it's a different, totally different time. Another day. <laughs> Pretty cool. So, what I wanted to um, what I wanted to share with you guys first is just share with you a couple albums that I thought were great in 2019 that was released. And one of them, probably, I don't want to start out with my favorite one. So, one album that that came out in 2019 was Amana Mars Berserker. Now, I became an Amon Marth fan, like, I don't know, probably, I would say about three or four years ago, maybe a little, maybe a little longer than that. Uh, I became a huge fan of them. And then, like, as soon as I found out about their music, you know, I didn't really listen to a lot of death metal before that. But as soon as I found out about their music, I started really digging into their backlog and everything. And it was just so, so cool, you know, and, uh, and I actually got to see them live a few years ago. And holy crap, you're talking about an awesome freaking show, man. They had the theatrics and everything, and they're just a bunch of cool dudes, you know. Yes, the faceless raise, raise the horns. Awesome. And they've got, like, this uh, big, you know, thing with horns sticking out. And they, they get archers, you know, on stage, like on, you know, on these little pulpits on stage and have people with swords and stuff. So it was just a really good show. I'm trying to remember who opened for them. Oh, I, who opened for him? Um, what is the name of that band? Now I totally forgot. Uh, Ex Mortis. Ex Mortis opened for him. And that was the first time I heard Ex Mortis. And those guys are just awesome on guitar as well. Um, <clears throat> so let me... That's one album. Let me scroll through the comments real quick here, guys. Let's just make sure I didn't miss any questions. Okay, Dean, you said uh, just out uh, the new Five Finger Death Punch CD. Okay, I have not... I have not heard that yet, dude. Um, you know, I heard five. I heard the one song that Five Finger Death Punch did with Rob Hal Halford, 
And I'm a huge Rob Halford fan. I love that dude. Like, I could just give him a kiss on his bald head. He might kiss me back, too. <laughs> but, no, I just I love him as a person and love his, his voice and everything. And, um, you know, so the song he did, I think he did that with Five Finger Death Punch. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you see me looking down here, it's because I'm, I'm reading the comments from my laptop, so I'm not, I'm not ignoring you guys. <laughs> You're like, what's he looking at? Um, do I listen? Do I listen to the new Ozzy album? You know, I need to dig into the new Ozzy album. I haven't dug in. I've only heard some of the stuff that they play in the radio at my gym. Uh, and I'm gonna be honest, I really wasn't too impressed. And maybe it's because of the one song I'm, I'm hearing is just kind of the ballady one, and it's like it, it almost feels like he's trying to accommodate what's going on in the U.S. radio. Uh, you know, and but I need to give I need to give the uh, the rest of the album a chance. I've not dug into that, so I will do that. That will be on my checklist. Um, See the fish climb trees. What a cool name, dude! You saw X Mortis open up for Death Angel. Oh, I'd love to see. Now that's another album, guys. Another album, 2019. I've got my list here. Uh, was Death Angel's Humanicide? I man, Death Angel has really stayed true to their thrash metal roots. And I think a lot of the bands have, but I can really say that about Death, Man a Death Angel, uh, and I can also say that about Overkill, which they had a new album, Wings of War. And I really haven't dug into that too much, but what I can tell you about the new, the newer Overkill over the past several years is they're really on top of their game, man. They're just like Death Angel, they have stayed true to their thrash metal roots, so that's pretty, that's pretty awesome there. Charles, thanks for joining, dude. Charles Benson's on. Uh, Charles, you know, dude, I, I remember finding your channel. Charles has got this really cool instrumental, uh, and hopefully hopefully, I'm okay saying this, Charles, but I, I know a friend of yours passed away a long time ago at a young age, and uh, he wrote this killer instrumental. I just, I just somehow found it on YouTube. This is probably 10 years ago. And then, uh, and then I started following him. He started following me, you know, and we've just kept in touch over the years. But, yeah, just... Uh, you know, I'll I'll try to remember to send that video out to you guys at some point. But that's an awesome song you did, Charles. And I think you did a re I think you did like a re um, a new version of that too. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Knocked loose mistakes, likes fractures. Anthony, I didn't understand that one. I'm sorry, dude. I was reading your comment here. Okay, blood incant in incantation. Hidden history of the human race. I have not listened to that. That's from Dozy just posted that. Uh, Zane, you're saying of Mice and Men probably had my favorite album in two, 2019. They came out and showed me a whole new level of musicianship. I need to check them out too, man. I'm not familiar. That's another reason why I wanted to do this video because I want to talk about some metal bands. I learned I learned so much from you guys, uh, you know, on YouTube, and I know a lot of you guys follow my Facebook page as well and Instagram and all that. Um, but I have learned about new bands from a lot of you guys that I have never heard before. So, you know, thank you for that. And that's why, that's kind of why we're going through this right now. So let's see here. Yeah, I've, I've got to listen to Of Mice and Men. Craig, Project Bass Player. Burning Witches. No, I've never heard of Burning Witches, dude. See, this is another band I got to check out. Um, let's see, Knocked Loose. I, Anthony, I have not heard of Knocked Loose, dude. Nope. Charles, that was three versions of your song. <laughs> awesome, dude. Um, let's see, we got some good stuff coming in here. Blood Incantation. I've got it. I definitely got to check that out. That just sounds cool. Uh, Anthony, I will check out Knocked Loose. Definitely check out that. Um, yeah, Faceless, any, anything that gets your music going, you know, <laughs> going one to 180 in three seconds, that works. And that's a Monomarth. Uh, there's a couple other. One album. Um, if, just a shameless plug. I always do this, guys. Um, you know, I did release my album. I'm not here to talk about my album tonight. Um, and you'll, you guys will see more on that, of course, because that's how I make my living now off my music. But yeah, I did release Masterpiece ugh, CDs right here. I did release Masterpiece in 2019 as well. Um, so that was that was out. And thank you guys for supporting that. I pr really, really do appreciate you guys. Um, Another album I wanted to mention, though, and this album struck me big time. It was Queen's Reich's The Verdict. Now, that is a freaking awesome album. I'll be honest with you guys. I have been, I have been really disappointed with that band really ever, ever since Empire. I'm sorry, not, yeah, Empire, Empire. So I was a huge fan of the early Queen's Reich. I loved them, man. They were like this really dark, kind of gothic, 
almost like eerie and scary uh, hard rock metal. And nobody sounded like them at all, man. Nobody. And, um, and then after Empire, they kind of went, I think they got on, I, it was probably their label's fault. It was probably the, you know, the record label's fault for pushing them to, to appeal to the grunge and whatever crap was going on back then. Oh, if there's one era, of, it's like music kind of stopped being cool like around 1998 and it lasted all through the 2000s. Just my opinion. I know, I know not everyone agrees with me and that's fine. But I think once that, once the whole Seattle and grunge, and I know, I know some people like that stuff. I get it. But if you were a good guitar player back in those days, you were pretty much out of work because they were not hiring people that could play real guitar solos and just real, real musicianship on guitar. You know, it was just the four chords and all that stuff. So anyway, um, but Queensryche really disappointed me all those years and they started coming out with better stuff and I really didn't give them a chance because I was like, eh, nothing really hooked me, but I heard the album The Verdict. So guys, definitely check that out. Queensryche's The Verdict. That's a really, really good album, man. It's awesome. Um, so Craig, project bass player and guitar, 777. I, right now, I'm about to switch beers. Uh, Craig's asking what beer I'm drinking. I know not all you guys drink beer, so I won't spend a lot of time on this. Um, I'm drinking Singha. This is a Thai beer. It's, it's like Thailand. It's kind of like uh, Singha is to Thailand what like probably Butter Miller Light is to America, but this tastes way better than any American lager. This stuff is great. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I'm drinking. Yeah, I'm going to crack open a new one here pretty soon. I'll share that with you too. Um, real quick, guys, on that note, I don't mean to get off track here, but I, you guys know I do a metal and beer series on this channel, my Jason Stallworth channel. Uh, what I'm, and I've got a poll out there too. I posted a blog post on YouTube the other day just for you guys to vote. And what I'm asking, you know, what I'm thinking about doing is just creating a separate channel for metal and beer. And that, that channel would be just strictly my beer tasting and beer reviews, you know, and just kind of some entertainment, a lot of really fun entertainment. And of course I'll talk about metal stuff on there. Uh, but I won't be playing guitar on that hardly at all to be, it'll be mainly just an entertainment channel, but strictly for craft beer drinkers that love metal music. So I'm thinking about creating a new like sub channel just for that, because I know not everybody on this channel, you know, drinks beer and that's perfectly fine. So I don't want to bombard you guys with that stuff. So, uh, if you go through the blog post on my channel, you might see it, you know, or let me know in the comments, you know, what, you know, how you guys think about, how you guys feel about me, you know, I'm still going to do this channel. This is not going anywhere. So, you know, but yeah, anyway, so let me go through the comments, learn, I, Zane says he learned to pirate <clears throat> the pirate metal riff and posted it on Instagram. And even since then, I have loved Amana Marth. Zane, do tag tag me on Instagram if you can think about it. I don't know if you tag me or not, but um, guys, my my IG handle. Let me just. It's real simple. It's really just my name. If you go to Instagram, uh, man, I forgot how to spell my name here. Let's try that. There we go. So if you go to Instagram, just just go there and uh, follow me on there because I'm like I try to do YouTube videos. You know, at least two to three a week. Uh, I'm gonna start pumping out some more because I got. That's something exciting coming up. I'm going to tell you about that uh, in a few minutes. But definitely follow me on Instagram because I'm always posting videos like every day, sometimes multiple times a day. And a lot of them are just guitar, just playing some really cool metal riffs and sometimes full mix, whatever. So, um, And I share a lot of personal stuff on there too. I like to get personal with you guys. So... Um, let me get let me catch up on the comments here, guys. Yeah, I love Amon Amart though. I absolutely love them. There that that latest album, Berserker, is really a really solid album. Uh Zane speaking of 90 stuff, hard uh hardcore is making one hell of a return. And I'll be sure to check out all your suggestions. Okay, yeah, hardcore music is making a return, and we see that, man. It's awesome. I see a lot of I, I see a lot of metal bands really just being a, a good metal band, you know, just playing good quality metal music. And I think some of the record labels are realizing, especially, see, metal's different from pop and country and all the other stuff. And nothing against those genres, although they suck. <laughs> I'm halfway joking. Don't throw anything at me. Um, you know, but, you know, like metal, metal has always, like, really uh, enticed people like us. Let's just be honest. We're a little bit different from the mainstream society. We're good people. We're awesome people. All of you guys are awesome on here. Uh, but metal, we're just a different culture, man. We're just different, you know. Um, 
Mike Olson says labels suck. Labels do suck. But I think metal labels are coming around and realizing that, hey, we can't really control our metal bands because the metal fans aren't going to like them anymore if we try to change too much of what they're trying to do. I'm, I'm an independent artist. I am on my own label. I am, I am you know, I do everything myself. Uh, so that's why I do pitch my products on here to you guys. That's why I do mention my albums often and my shop and all that. And I'll, I'll put a link to my shop later. But um, that's one of the reasons why I do that because this, this is my full-time job now. And I handle everything from start to finish. I don't have any label, you know, you, you know, doing stuff for me. I have to handle the marketing and promoting and everything, which I love it. I am not complaining. I love doing that stuff, man. It's awesome. Um, Vafa, thank you for joining. So, Niall, dude. I have not listened to Niall that much. But you're saying Niall, vile Nilotic rights. That just sounds like a freaking cool, creepy metal album, dude. I am definitely gonna check that out. <laughs> and I, I missed one up here. I'm, I'm going through the comments, guys. Anthony, why don't you make your? Anthony's asked me why don't I make my own uh, guitar workshop. Guys, I am working on something. I'm going to be sending you guys some questions uh, here over, over throughout the course of the next few weeks, probably the next two weeks. I am going to be making a guitar course, a guitar workshop. Um, it's I don't want to like remake what everybody else has out there. Uh, I'll just tell you this real quick. What I'm thinking of doing is I'm thinking of the course not really being, it will be a lesson course. You will learn how to play different uh, types of wrists and styles. But the caveat, and this is what's going to take it really to the next level, is I want to get deeper into teaching uh, some of some of my skills in riff writing and really helping you bring out your own music. So uh, I don't want to talk too much about that because I haven't figured out all the semantics of the course. But I will be sending some different ideas out there because I'm going to get your vote as I'm making this course because I want to give you guys what you want. But yes, Anthony, I, I will be I will be making a course. Um, Charles, you'll follow both channels, my Metal and Beer channel. And thank you, dude. Yeah. So I think I'm going that route. I think I'm probably going to create, you know, create something a little different for metal and beer um <clears throat> excuse me uh mike says if you make a second channel i'd expect some cat videos <laughs> actually that would go really good with um with metal and beer you know i would probably because again that's going to be really for entertainment um niall i'm definitely going to check out niall dazi says i enjoy the new devourment i haven't i haven't heard that Mike says labels suck. Mike Olson, thanks for joining, Big Mike. Mike Olson on here, guys. He he is the band who has mastered every album that I've put out. You know, I've got four albums out. You guys can find me. Just look up my name, Jason Stallworth. Most of you have listened to my stuff anyway. But if you look up my name on Spotify, iTunes, uh, Google Play, Amazon Music, all those sources, I'm, I'm on all those platforms. You can just Google my name and you'll see my music come up. Google puts that up there now. So... Um, and the mastering behind that is Mike Olson. So he's done a phenomenal job, which is why I keep going back to him. <laughs> um, yeah, Mike, yeah, labels do suck, man. I know Mike had some trouble with the label and, and I think, yeah, you guys finally got away from it. So that's, that's a tough one. Um, Brian King says a tech death metal band cognizance. I have not, uh, I've not heard that dude. I've definitely got to, uh, definitely got to check that out. Uh, Mike Meadow and beer. I I'm looking at doing a separate channel, man. I'm, I don't have it out yet, but that's, that's coming. Uh, let's see here. Nice shirt. Thank you, dude. Uh, Charles noticed my Delane shirt. I got this shirt last year at a Delane concert. Um, actually my, my good friend, I don't know if you guys saw our live video over the weekend. Uh, that was my good friend, Eddie. Eddie Gray, he's the owner of the Pipe Nook, um, which is like the old school tobacco pipes. But we did a live video. Um, well, he did the metal and beer video. I, I posted that a couple days ago. But we also did a live, I think, on Saturday. And uh, he was down for the John Waite concert. Anyway, he was also, he comes down from Pensacola, my hometown. I'm in the Tampa area. And uh, we go to, we try to get a show to go to, you know, because he's been one of my closest friends for years now. We used to play in bands and stuff. Uh, but no, him and I went to see Delane and Amorphous. And I had not heard Amorphous until that point, you know, before the show, you know, because Eddie started digging into him and then I started listening to him a little bit and I didn't realize, you know, first I didn't realize they were a band from Finland, which is so many cool metal bands are from Finland and they have been around for a long time, Amorphous. 
But, you know, those guys and Delane on stage, that was that was a really good contrast of music, of some different styles of music, but it works so well. Because Amorphous is a little bit, you know, they're more, a little bit more hardcore, you know, with the death metal vocals and stuff. Um, See the Fish Climb Trees uh, says he's just started learning guitar eight months ago, and, and my videos have, have helped. Thank you so much, man. I, I, I appreciate that. I really, um, you know, I really try to put stuff out there that, that's truly going to help you guys. I mean, I like to do some funny stuff and, and be entertaining and all that. That's fun. Uh, but I, the lessons I put out there, and it's funny because lessons, not, not too many people search on YouTube for these types of lessons because mine are a bit unique. So I don't get a lot of views. And I'm, I'm actually okay with that. Uh, as long as the video, as long as the people watching those guitar lesson videos, those tutorials, as long as I'm, I'm seeing comments and it's helping people, I'll always put those out there because that's really, the, that's the goal of this channel. I wanted to help you guys, you know, become better guitar players and more proficient, you know, musicians. So on that note, did you guys, did you guys catch my video? I think I released it on Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was yesterday and it was uh, seven ways. Uh, to on how to become a better guitarist, a better metal guitarist. If you didn't see that video yet, after after we finish this, I definitely encourage you to go back and watch that because you know the seven tips are a lot of them are just really life tips, but they truly will. So I'm giving you some of the inside things that really helped me go from you know just starting out to you know to where I was in a very very fast time frame. So definitely check that video out if you haven't. It's called Seven. It's called Seven Ways on How to Become a Better Metal Guitarist, something like that. It's my last video, so definitely, definitely check that out. Um, thanks, Charles. Appreciate that, dude. Thank you, man. Uh, the Faceless said, found my channel searching for Line 6 XT Live Sounds. Oh, my God, man. That was a long time ago, dude. Uh, the, the, Pod H, uh, the Pod XT Live. Yeah, I remember getting that, and I was so excited when I got that little unit, and... Um, I almost made my first album with it. I released my first album, Apocalyptic Dreams, in 2013. That's kind of like a, a Iron Maiden meets Judas Priest meets old Metallica with a little Satriani influence, that sort of thing. And uh, I was going to record that with the XT Live, the Pod XT Live, but at the last minute, I upgraded and got the HD 500, the Pod HD 500. So I've got a ton of videos out there, man, on both the XT Live and the HD 500. So. Those uh, and I know those have helped a lot of people because I would do screenshots or screenshots, you know, of the stuff. I think I have those in playlists too, guys. So if you if you have those units, you can scroll down through the playlist and, and find them. Um, thank you, Faceless. Yeah, I, I know you've listened to that album, Apocalypse of Dreams. Oh, you found Anthony. You found me from my yeah, dude. The recording, the home studio recording video I did. Uh, I think that's my most viewed video on YouTube. You know, the videos I have that got the most views were the ones I did a long time ago in my, my wife and I's old apartment. You know, I made, a, we like, we didn't have a dining area. That was a studio. Of course, I ate in the studio sometimes, so it was dining. <laughs> but no, that's, that's where I recorded uh, that first album. And, um, you know, that was, I recorded it there, and I think I launched it that same year we moved into our home. So that was a good year. We, we bought a new home, and I launched my first, like, official album in 2013. That was a really cool year. Um, so what other bands? So, guys, what is your, I know some of you have told me already, but if you haven't, what's your favorite metal album that was released in 2019? You might have to switch over and Google that real quick, and that's cool. To, you know, to look up, you know, if you forgot the band or whatever, but just put in there, like, what's your favorite band? Or, I'm sorry, what's your favorite album that was released in 2019? I'd, I'd like to, uh, okay, so Faceless says Atonement. That was Kill Switch, yeah. Dark Thrones, Old Star. Oh, I forgot about that, man. I totally forgot about Dark, Dark, Dark Throne has some really cool stuff. Behind the Horror says Dream Theater. I didn't know Dream Theater had an album out, dude. I like Dream Theater a lot. Um, you know, of course, they're they're progressive. And the funny thing is, like, there's some there's some Dream Theater songs that I really really like. Like, man, this is awesome song. But then there's some other stuff that doesn't quite reach me. You know, just is kind of a hit or miss with me. But overall, they're an, an amazing band, extremely talented. Project bass player, dude. Thank you, brother. Masterpiece was your favorite. I appreciate that. <laughs> I definitely do. I released that in yeah September last year, man. So actually, I, I released Masterpiece album 
on Friday 13th. It was September 13th last year. So that was just, that just kind of, you know, that was cool. Um, Charles, you're not really sure. Most of your favorite albums are, are ages. Yeah, you know what, dude? A lot of my favorite albums, um, a lot of my favorite albums are definitely old albums. You know, I mean, I mean, I'm still a huge Master of Puppets fan, you know, and of course, Megadeth's Rust in Peace, those albums, uh, Testaments, Practice What You Preach. I'm trying to remember when Testaments, Brotherhood of the Snake came out. I don't think it was 2019. I think it might have been the year before that. If any of you know, put that in the comments. I can't look it up right now. Blood Incantations, in Incantation, I have a hard time saying that for some reason. Dazi says, Blood in Incantation or Death Spill Omega. Ooh, okay. And you said you didn't listen to as much new stuff last year. I can relate to that. And, you know, that's just, a lot of bands are putting out a lot more albums these days. And I think, I think we have to, I'm going to release something this year. I don't know. I, I don't have a date, uh, but I've already got the ideas and kind of the process, you know, brewing on those. But yeah, I think artists, I think bands and artists to, to stay on top. And I, and honestly, to be financially, you know, semi successful, I think they do have to put out a lot of music these days because there's so much, there's so much data out there. There's so much music and so much everything, you know, with the internet that once you put something out, you know, six months later, it's buried by a pile of other new stuff. So, you know, I think people are just putting out more albums, but you know, the, the I guess the hard part about that is you don't want to just like put stuff out there. You know what I mean? And I learned that with YouTube. There's there's some videos that I would just put out there because I need to get a video out. And I learned that well, that's not really productive. So I want bands, myself included. I'm I'm absolutely speaking to myself here. Um, you know, we have to be careful with that. We have to be careful that we're not just putting stuff out just to put stuff out to have a new something, a new album. But we've got to really go through the process and make sure that it's a quality album. Because if you put something that's really high quality out there and you know how to market it and get it out there to people, and I'm, I'm going to start something with that at some point as well, helping you guys market, you know, your music and stuff. Um, I've learned some things with this last album release, you know, that's, that's helped me and I want to pass that along. But anyway, so it's hard though when you put stuff out there you know it's it's buried if you don't get it out there to the right people you know what i mean so mike olson you guys you guys have a release coming this year you're good yeah cool anthony you said you wish you were older so you could have seen fear factory pantera death oh death would have been good to see man i never got to see them either that would have been really cool the Faceless, Deicide. Did Deicide come out with a new album this year? Sorry, guys. I was not chugging this beer, although I chugged it. But I've had this beer for a while sitting out here, so it was getting kind of warm. I know in England they drink warm beer, but I'm really not a fan of warm beer, so I had to finish that up. No chugging on camera. <laughs> Behind the horror. Yeah, I will. Um, I'm going to start out putting out a couple of blog posts that will help people build their website. Um, that's something I do on the side as well. Guys, as well. I, I help build band websites. And I can, if you if you need help with that, reach out to me. I mean, I charge you, of course, because, again, I'm, I'm full-time working for me now. So... <laughs> I got to pay the uh, electric bill to have these lights and studio powered. But yeah, if you if you're looking for help on a website, especially if it's WordPress based or if it's Shopify or something like that, I can absolutely uh, get that done for you. But yeah, I'll, I'll be putting some stuff out there. Yep, old school faces, old school. Okay. Project bass player says Black Sabbath is still his number one. Dude, I. I never really got into Black Sabbath. This this is a funny thing, and I respect Black Sabbath like crazy because they do have some good stuff. But uh, I missed out on a lot of music. I'll share this. When I heard Metallica's Master of Puppets and uh, Injustice for All, that was my two album, my first two metal albums I bought. When I 
heard those, I was so blown away that if it didn't sound like that or close to that, I didn't want anything to do with it. And this was back in like the, the late 80s, early 90s. But the thing is, is I missed out on a lot of music because the music that was recorded before that time wasn't quite up to par with the production. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I actually, I'm, I'm very much against overprodu the overproduced music. And I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago on a live session, but I'm, I'm very much against uh, the overproduced music. You know what I mean? It's just, it's like, oh my God, all, all metal songs are starting to sound the same now. And I, I tried really hard with my album, you know, Masterpiece, not to do that. You know, I tried really hard for every song to be a little different, you know. Um, but yeah, so we've got a question. Anyone for the latest as I lay dying? Man, I've got some family in, in Thailand, in the Pak Chong area. And uh, some of my, my uh, I guess they're, they're my cousins by marriage, but they were they were going to see As I Lay Dying in, in Bangkok. And I'm like, man, I wish I could have been there for that. I liked some of their older stuff, but now I'll say this about As I Lay Dying. They're, they're one of those bands that when you listen to an album, when you get to track five, you're like, hey, I think I've heard this already. And, and the same with Killswitch, man. Like as somebody mentioned Killswitch, um, I think somebody mentioned the Atonement album which I haven't really dug into that because the last the last few Killswitch Engage, and I love Killswitch Engage, man. I mean, they were just the masters at what they do, but the last few albums I've heard, man, it just all the songs just kind of ran together, and I'm thinking, okay, is this like just one giant song or, you know? So this is the challenge with metal bands, and, and all of us as guitar players, you know, I, I face this challenge as well, but we have to be careful you know, to not let every single song sound the same. And it's one of the things I talked about in the video I posted on Tuesday, the seven ways to become a better metal guitarist. One, that was one of the tips I gave you guys is, is, uh, is branch out, you know, get out of your comfort zone. We have those, and you guys who have seen the video, you saw me use this example. You know, a lot of our, uh, a lot of our comfort zones are around this area on those first three, sometimes four strings or they may be here or whatever, but I encourage you guys to branch out and play songs even in different keys. We have a tendency as metalheads to always play those heaviest notes. It's like one band, and I don't really consider, consider them metal. I really wasn't a big fan, but, but this band nailed this perfectly. Remember Godsmack? Every one of their songs started dun, 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 dun in E minor or whatever chord they were tuned to and every yeah exactly yuck I, I I agree but every song sounded the same and I'm like okay can we play something different now <laughs> and apparently Godsmack says no we cannot play something different dun 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 I'm like oh my god smack so that was um yeah but a lot of bands a, a lot of bands really um yeah, Godsmack did have some really great drumming. They just they had some badass drumming, dude. No cover charge. Mention that. I, I agree with that. Um, the drummer was probably wishing he was in like a real metal band, though. <laughs> but hey, you know what? He was probably getting paid good money to be in that band. So you know, um, you love metalcore faceless. Yeah, I I, li I do like some metalcore stuff, dude. That's why I you know I that's why I do like Killswitch. But I I go back to Killswitch's earlier stuff. You know, there's. When a band starts out, and you guys have seen this with Metallica, with Megadeth, with many, many metal bands, when a band starts playing, uh, there's a certain energy that comes with that those new songs that they're playing. You know, there's there's just something magical that's happening, and a lot of that is making mistakes, going through the process, you know, uh, kind of like filling each other out, and you know, the, the band members and all that, and going through those those trials and hard times and and there's that i don't give a crap attitude because that's just kind of the metal mentality is like I, you know f the world I'm, I'm gonna play metal so there's this aggressive energy and just really uh this authentic vibe that when a new metal band starts playing that they have they're like no we're just we're doing our thing but then as they evolve and we all should evolve i'm not saying we should stay in the same place you you can't replicate master of puppets because then You'd be doing the same thing we just talked about. Everything sounds the same. But I think what happens is that 
I think they get sucked into the success, and success is not a bad thing. I, you know, I'm I'm on that path too. I, I want to be more successful. I want you guys to be more successful and as musicians, you know. But it, you know, it's just one of those things. I think they just get pulled in so many directions and kind of become comfortable, and they lose that edge, you know, and they just start making, you know, the same music over and over and over again. <laughs> it's what I've seen. But yeah, that's just that's just kind of my two cents on that, guys. You know. Um, Okay, so let me catch up on comments here. Dodge said I actually liked the coal chamber for a minute back in the day. <laughs> that was what, yeah, the get, yeah, I, I remember that lyric line in one of the Godsmack songs, get back. It's like, don't worry, I'm back. I'm not going to listen to it. <laughs> oh, man. Have I ever listened to Revocation? No, I have not. Um, I'll have to go back through all these comments, guys, and, and do that. Guys, I'm going to do my, we're not done yet, but I'm going to do my shameless plug real quick. I am going to um, give you guys a link real quick. I like to do this, you know, in about the middle of the video or whatever, and I'll throw this in again. But a lot of you have asked how you can support me, and I'm going to show you how right now. I'm giving you guys my website to my shop. That's where you can find this album here masterpiece if you're in the u.s this is kind of a no-brainer to pick up if you don't have it already because shipping's cheap and i have I actually have my cd like people keep telling me to raise the price on it i know you can get most cds real cheap from other bands that are you know that labels are pushing but i have this thing pretty reasonably priced you know for independent artists you got to remember we have to pay our own health insurance and all that stuff now <laughs> so yeah i do have to i do have to make profit off of it but um, and I've got like t-shirts on that shop and mugs and all that. I've got a brand new keep it metal design If you like if you go on that shop and you go to collections up top click on that there'll be a drop down You'll see the different collections um, And basically that's like the keep it metal collection has the keep it metal uh, hoodie t-shirt tank top mug and all that stuff There's a metal and weights all that stuff's in there and of course there's a masterpiece collection as well So yeah, if you guys want to support me um, cause I don't have anything like Patreon. I've thought about doing that and I, I still need to look into it. But if you guys want to support me, that's a really good way. Um, I know the CD is probably not feasible to ship overseas, but you know, um, but the t-shirts and all that stuff, you know, I've got shops in, in the UK and the U S so, you know, most places in the world can get the t-shirts and merch mugs and that sort of thing. So anyway, shameless plug, uh, no cover charge and your car is flogging Molly. Why do I remember flogging Molly? They've been around for a while, I believe. Yeah. I think I think Flog Molly's been around for a while. Were they kind of like a... Um, I don't even know the genre, to be honest with you. Oh, The Faceless is asking, which music is in your car, MP3 player? I always connect my iPhone. So I take that back. I do have a CD in my car. And the CD I have in my car, where is it? I, mean, I know it's in my car, but I've got the case. I don't know where it is now, guys. But I have Melissa Cross's uh, Zen of Screaming CD in my car. I bought that because when I decided to record the vocals for a Masterpiece, because I, I do some death metal vocals on there, as you guys know, but I also do some clean or more thrash metal style vocals. And, um, and some there's about four different vocal styles on that album. You know, there's a couple screams on there. So I really just like busted my rump and worked really really hard on you know on my vocals for several months and I still do today and so I got Melissa Cross's Zen of Screaming and she's like coached many 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 like metalcore singers screamer singers and, and really teaches us how to how to do those vocals without screwing up our voice because if you guys notice a lot of singers not even death metal singers a lot of like singer you know really great singers singers their voices crap these days because they've destroyed it over the years just not by breathing properly and, and not singing properly you know you may be able to belt out a super high note or whatever but if you're not if you're not doing certain things while doing that you can really screw up your voice bad and i've screwed my voice up before so anyway so in my cd player i always give you these long-winded stories um but in my cd player is with the DVD she has, there's a CD on just vocal exercises. And on my way home from the gym, every single morning, well, at least five days a week, I go through those exercises, which is about 15 minutes. So I, I at least get that. You know, I tell you guys to practice every day, even if it's 10 or 15 minutes, you know. 
So I, I at least do that. That's in my car right now. As far as music goes, just whatever's on my iPhone, whatever I feel like playing. Sometimes I'll I'll just put everything <clears throat> on like a, a random play, you know, or something like that. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Craig, U.S. postage is expensive to Australia. If you're in the U.S., like shipping a CD, I just learned this. If when if you go on my shop and you order just a CD, um, you can choose the media option, and shipping's like less than three dollars, pretty much everywhere. It takes a little longer to get there. But I mean, three bucks, man, it's worth it, you know. So a lot of people do that when they when they have bought my album. Uh, let's see. Just going through the comments here. Seen Pearl Jam, no cover charge, seen Pearl Jam a couple times. They, you know what, they had something authentic. Um, they, you know, Pearl Jam, I wasn't a fan. And I only wasn't a fan at that time just because I didn't like that whole movement that was happening, you know. Now, granted, 80s hair metal probably needed a rest at that time. Uh, but, you know, if you, like, took the hair and makeup away and just and some of the cheesy lyrics and just kept the music of a lot of those bands like Warrant and Winger and all that stuff, man, those guitar players were phenomenal. Red Beach for Winger, that dude, he is phenomenal. Uh, the guitar player for Warrant, I don't remember his name, but he was, like, really, really good. You know, but, thing, look, things change over time, and, and there's almost, like, every 10 years or so, there's this rebellion of what's going on. You know, it's kind of the heart of rock and roll in general. It's like it's a rebellious spirit, you know. You rebel just against whatever, you know. <laughs> but I, I do think music took a turn for the worse. But Pearl Jam, I will say, uh, they were really authentic because they were kind of the ones, they didn't really start the grunge scene. They were just, Pearl Jam was just a rock band. You know, they're just a rock and roll band. You know what I mean? I've seen interviews with um, Eddie Vedder and... He was kind of a shy person, or maybe he still is, I don't know. But, you know, they I don't know that they really expected, you know, all that to happen for them. I'm sure they're happy about it. But, yeah, they were just a solid rock band. They just jammed. It was so, yeah, I mean, they were, I have respect for them, definitely. Punk rock all the way, huh? Yeah, and the funny thing about Eddie's voice is, this is funny, is every band almost that was semi-popular, they were trying to sound like Eddie Vedder. <laughs> so it was funny. I remember seeing this, um, what was it on VH1? Or what was that one? Is MTV or VH1 where they had like the battle of the bands and they would do this claymation thing and it was Eddie Vedder against the singer for Creed. I'm horrible with names. And they're like, it's my voice. And he's like, no, it's my voice. Because, <laughs> you know, the Creed guy was trying to sound like Eddie Van, Eddie, Eddie Van Halen, <laughs> Eddie Vedder. You know, but all the bands, I mean, a lot of bands after that, just they just all kind of ran together for me. Melvins were there before grunge and still going out. Yeah, Melvins. I remember hearing about them. Bad Religion coming here this year. Oh, that's cool, man. I've never seen them. I have not been to a lot of shows, man. They, it, believe it or not, when I was younger, I didn't. I didn't go to many shows. Um, I grew up in sort of. Uh, I don't want to say and my parents are awesome. So I mean, no, my parents were just amazing, amazing parents. It was my dad, and my stepmom, but she, she's my mom. Um, but we, we did grow up kind of in a strict Christian household. Uh, and my parents weren't so much like, do this, don't do that. They weren't, they weren't so legalistic as the rest of, you know, what we were around. But, you know, heavy metal music, of course, in the household was looked at as, that there's the devil's music. <laughs> we can't have the devil's music in our house. My parents don't talk like that. I'm just, I'm making fun of, anyway, so where I came from. But yeah, so it was kind of like, you know, I had my I had my Metallica. They they kind of knew I had these albums and listened to it, but they didn't really say anything. I know they didn't approve of it. So because of that, I kind of kept everything on the DL. So I didn't have a ton of albums. And I certainly wasn't going to concerts back then like a lot of my friends were, you know, people were going to see Metallica, Megadeth, Guns N' Roses and all that, you know, and I just I never got to do that. And I never really pushed the envelope on that either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was um, Ndazi, That uh, that was celebrity deathmatch. That's what that. That's what I saw that on when Eddie Vedder and the guy from Creed were punching each other. The claymation figures were punching each other. It's like it's my voice. It's my voice too. And <laughs> they were going at it, man. It was freaking hilarious. Uh, man, I can't believe I. Uh, and Mike, it sounds like a mad TV segment, but I th I think it was a celebrity deathmatch though. I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. So yeah, but anyway. What I was saying before, though, guys, is because I was into this really, like, micro niche of metal, the Master of Puppets, the Justice, some of the Megadeth stuff, um, 
I missed out on a lot of music, a lot of great and awesome music that, you know, that many of you probably listen to, like from the 70s and, and you know, whatever. So I missed out on a lot of that stuff. And I, I missed out on Sabbath because Sabbath, it was Sabbath, you know. It wasn't Master of Puppets. It didn't have that, jun, 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 you know. And I was just so obsessed with Master of Puppets. I was so obsessed with Injustice for All. I was like a Metallica fanboy, you know. I could draw it perfectly on my school folders back then. I think I was only like 15. But I, I spent most of my time, you know, learning, you know, learning those riffs. And then eventually I branched off and started writing my own and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, so, guys, any, um, I know I kind of, and we always get like on different topics, which is cool. That's why I love having these chats. And I don't know about you guys, but I learned about a bunch of different bands tonight that I didn't know about. You know, so I'm going to scroll through here and I'm going to check out. I think once I publish this video, once it's, you know, because once we finish the video, it'll be out there live uh, for everybody. I think you can still see the comments and all too. So does anybody have any, um, any other bands that they want to talk about? Like, for, or any albums, I guess, from 2019? Because I was, I was wanting to be specific for albums that were released in 2019. First, your first metal band you heard was Gorefest. Ooh. No cover charge. Black Flag. I had a lot of punk friends um, back in school, and I remember them being heavily into Black Flag. I never really listened to them that much, so I'll, I want to check out some of their older stuff. I want to see what that was all about. So I had a lot of friends that were really heavy into Black Flag. That's cool. Now, real quick, 2020. I have something really exciting for you guys tomorrow, by the way. I'm going to tell you about it. Thanks for hanging in here with me. Um, but 2020, have you guys heard Delane's new album? It's, I think it's called Apocalypse and Chill. Um, this, is not the, this is not the album cover, but the, the band Delane. Yeah, I think it's called Apocalypse and Chill. And uh, I'm not a fan of album artwork. It, <laughs> I don't want to be, you know overly critiquing the band, but Delane, um, they came out with their new album, and it's probably the heaviest album they've come out with. Their singer, Charlotte Wessel, she's she's amazing. And uh, like I said, so I see them live. Every time they come here to Tampa, especially Delane or a band like Nightwish, I will be there, definitely, because I love I love this band. But this Delane's new album is really good. If you guys get a chance to see that, that's really an awesome album. Um, I actually, I got to meet Timo, their guitar player, last year in, in the concert we went to when Delane was uh, touring with Amorphous. Um, somebody's going to ask me what I'm drinking here, and I have to show you this because it's relevant to our conversation. This is a beer called Headbanger IPA. It's by a local brewery. My wife and I totally support local all the way, man. But it's uh, Seventh Sun Brewing. But yeah, Headbanger IPA, good stuff. So, yeah, that and then Nightwish's new album, I haven't really dug into that. Um, and I don't even know if it's out, to be honest with you. I've only, I think they had like a pre-release track, and I think the full album's coming out later this month or something like that. So I will have to, uh, I'll have to, um, you know, check that out when it comes out. Because I'm a big Nightwish fan, too. And I was excited to hear, um, you know, their new singer that they have there, Floor Jansen. I love her, man. She's, she's amazing. We saw them in concert two years ago uh, in St. Pete, close to here. And they, they put on a really good show. I've seen them several times in concert. Awesome, awesome band. So, No Cover Charge says, Metal and Beer is a great concept, by the way. Thank you, dude. Yeah, guys, one, um, I know I mentioned this earlier, but I am probably, probably not going to do any more Metal and Beer episodes on this channel. Uh, I'm, I'm considering branching off and having Metal and Beer be its own channel. But that will not take away anything from this channel. I'm still going to do just as many videos. Um, you guys know I'm, I'm full-time entrepreneur now, or whatever you call that. So I am, I am full-time. I don't just do music. I, do, you know, I run a fitness blog. I think most of you guys know about that, themuscleprogram.com. Um, that's, that's part of what I do. And I do some, I'm going to be doing a lot more freelance work to, to supplement. So uh, you know, I'm not only doing music, but I am able to focus a lot more on music and making videos and stuff. So... Anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, Charles, the artwork on Delane was cheesy, but but amazing tunes, man. Really, really good tunes. Devi. I don't know who Devi is, does he? Ghost Love Store. 
Paul G says ghost love store at Wacken. I want to go to Wacken one year, man. Just uh, just one time. Love to go see it. And yeah, Ghost Love Store, that, that song is just so deep. Like, lyrically, yes, but musically as well. Some of the stuff that Nightwish comes up with, I'm like, oh my God, how, how did you even think of that? You know, they're just, just the music is so beautiful, you know? So anyway, yeah, that's that. But I want to tell you guys real quick, guys, about the video coming out tomorrow. So who, who watched the movie called Rad? It was a BMX movie. This is a movie from the 80s. Do you guys remember the movie Rad? R-A-D? No? So, there was a specific song. And again, this is... Uh, okay, now we're, getting, now we're getting some comments. I think there's a delay in here. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of you guys have seen Rad. Yeah, one of the most awesome movies, like, ever. I'm, I'm an 80s buff. I mean, I grew up in the 80s, so... Um, yes... See the fish climb trees, just name it. Send me. So, guys, I've got a metal cover song coming out tomorrow on YouTube. Tomorrow, I've got it scheduled to post tomorrow morning, and Send Me an Angel is the song. I used to do that song all the time in karaoke. I play it on acoustic sometimes. It, here and there, I'll play acoustic out at, like, a brewery or whatever. And, um, yeah, Rad is Life, man. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love that I love that movie and I love that song. Yeah, Real Life is the name of the band. It's funny because now to give the artist credit, and this is what I, I'm, I'm going to be doing more cover songs. So if you guys have some songs you want me to do a metal cover of, um, you know, whether it's death metal or just metal or whatever, a lot of times I'll mix my vocals. I'll do half death metal. And like tomorrow, I don't want to give away too much, but tomorrow you'll hear me doing some death metal and some just regular like thrashy vocals as well. But yeah, that's going to... That's going to be put, I think it's scheduled to post at 5.30 a.m. tomorrow morning, Eastern Standard Time. So when you guys, definitely check that out, you know. Um, if you're subscribed to my channel, I think all of you are probably subscribed. If you're not, definitely hit the subscribe button and you'll get the notification and ding that little bell thing there. And you'll get the notification that, that when that song comes out. But yeah, definitely check that out. I'd love to hear your comments on that. Like I said, that's one of my favorite 80s songs. And I like it's funny because I started working on the cover a long time ago, like almost a year ago when I got my seven string because that's what I recorded it on. So it's a seven string version as well. It's not just a metal version. It is a seven string metal version of this song. So I think that, um, I think you guys, I think you guys are going to uh, like that. Ooh, do the last caress by Danzig, the Metallica version. Also Green Hell. Yeah, Green Hell's cool, man. Man. I didn't, I didn't know, yeah, I guess that album was kind of punk. Let's see here. Gleaming the Cube next. <laughs> yeah, so if you have ideas, if you guys have ideas for cover songs you want me to do, shoot them out there, um, you know, throw, throw them on Facebook or, or whatever, you know. Project Bass Player. Dude, you just said something. You just listed one of my... My favorite bands that I forgot about, Primal Fear. Man, they were cranking out albums like crazy for a while. I don't know when their last album, I think it was, um, man, I don't, I'm so horrible with like names and stuff like that, but I'm trying to remember. Um, Rule Breaker was one, and Something Black, it had the word black in it. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, Primal Fear is awesome, dude. I love, I love that band. My favorite song by Primal Fear is We Walk Without Fear. I can't remember what album it's on, and the song is like 10 minutes, and it's kind of, it's kind of ballady, not, I shouldn't say it's ballady, but it's kind of like hit you in the heart and punch you in the soul type thing, but it moves, and that's my favorite song, uh, Project Bass Player. That's, that's my favorite Primal Fear song. I love that tune, man. Starts out with a cool key, uh, some keys. Yeah, really, really good band. Dragon Force. Guys, I thought Dragon Force got in trouble because the drummer uh, didn't actually play the drums on one of the albums or one of the songs, and they did like a drum machine, so they got slammed hard for that one. I just remember, I didn't like dig too deep into that, but, you know, heard about it. Yeah, yeah, Mike Olson, Night, yeah, that, so that Nightwish album, I heard, I think they had a pre-release on one song on the Nightwish album, and it, but this actually getting released this, uh, this month, I think, right? So, I'm really excited about that. No cover charge. 
I am not really a fan of ghosts, dude. Um, they're, uh, I'm not really, I'm not really a religious person, guys, but when, I'm not a big fan of bands that just blatantly bash whatever, because I, uh, you know, it's like, I come from a Christian background, you know, my wife comes from a Buddhist background, and just the people I've worked with over the years come from different religious backgrounds, so I'm just, I get it, I understand why people bash it, I totally, you know, it's kind of like, um, I don't know, it's kind of like, I understand it, but I just don't agree with it, so I don't really support that, you know what I mean, so, and I honestly don't really care for ghost music, to be honest, man, I just don't, I've heard some of their stuff, and I get why people like them, though, because they, I will say this about ghosts, and I mean, they're, they're talented, and they look freaking scary, it's kind of cool, but, um, the thing that, yeah, they do sound corporate, dude, <laughs> like, like the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, you know, another band that kind of gives me that corporate vibe, that too polished vibe is Camelot, like I, and I think Camelot's here from Tampa, from uh, my area, but they they have such great musicians and their singers awesome. Their art, they're like they're, they're almost perfect. But when I listen to it, it's like it just sounds too perfect. You know, I, I don't know. There's something there, but I know they have a big fan base, so you know, they, I gotta admire that. But yeah. Anyway, guys, so definitely check that out tomorrow. Um, send me an angel that will hope you guys like that. Leave me some love on that, man. Give me some thumbs up and share that, share that on your social media or whatever. I know when you share YouTube stuff on like Facebook, they just, Facebook buries it, man, but who cares? Share it anyway. When you see that come out tomorrow, <clears throat> cover a King Diamond song that might be, yeah, that might be cool. And Paul, I'm not, I'm not a high note singer, dude. Yeah. I do like some King, King Diamonds. Ooh, except. Mike's calling Accept here. Accept's a good band too, man. They're awesome. But yeah, I'll, I'll tell you this about singing. I'm not really, I'm not a, I don't have a huge range, you know? Uh, so I stay within my safe zone when it comes to singing. I can get up there in my head voice a little bit. Um, what I feel, what I feel that most singers, where most singers fall short is they try way, way too hard to sing high. And the problem with that is when you start trying to get up there above where you should be, you lose your natural tone. And your natural tone to me is what makes you. It would is what makes you authentic and unique sounding. You know, and once you lose that, it's just it's just a high note. You know, it's like somebody hitting the highest note possible on their guitar on that twenty fourth fret and just be just letting it they're not really doing anything with it, you know, it just it's just a high note. You know, there's, there's no finesse, there's nothing. So that's, that's, that's where I'm at with singing. So you guys will never, like I, you know, I do some journey stuff sometimes every now and then on acoustic. I'll just play it when I'm playing out or whatever. Cause I, I do some covers sometimes, you know, uh, as a little side project, but I'm not going to try to hit Steve Perry's notes cause I can't. So I'm not even going to attempt it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to go falsetto to hit him. So, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just going to drop it down a key that's in my comfortable range to where it, where I can have my natural vocal tone and people can hear that. So that's just my thoughts. You know, I think, I think that singers get way too caught up into try in, in trying to sing too high. And yeah, if somebody mentioned on here, it's noise, Charles, you're right. It just, it just sounds like noise, you know, do a Sam cook song. Hey, did you guys, did you guys see my video? This wasn't Sam Cooke, and I can't remember the guy's name. So my wife wanted me to do this cover song, and I did a death metal cover of it. I don't know if a lot of you have seen it, though. There is uh, there's a song called Someone You Loved. And if you go back a few videos, I think I posted that either last week or the week before. I think it was two weeks ago. But look for, look for Someone You Loved on my channel. It's a death metal version of that. I don't know if you've heard the song. It's got those four perfect chords that make every song famous, you know, but yeah, I did a death metal version of that song. So check that out too if, after this video, but you're right. No cover charge. You're right, dude. Just, um, I'll do my own. I'll do my own version of the cover, man. You know what I mean? Charles, you're a Christian, not religious. Uh, that's kind of the boat I sit in, dude. I'll, you know, I'll share this with you guys. I, I like sharing the personal stuff with you guys. Cause you know, we're all, we're all buddies here. Metalhead friends. But yeah, I, I come from a Christian background. I, I don't hold a lot of the same beliefs that a lot of Christians that I know hold. And it doesn't mean it's good or bad. 
you know it's just I you know uh, you know I, I believe and so I don't want to get too deep into that but um, you know but I also don't I I'll absolutely do not bash any other religion either at the same time you know I understand that people are kind of born into their culture you know what I mean and you make the choice to follow that or not to follow that you know I, th I think there's I think there's um, I think if you feed the good side of yourself then the good's gonna come out if you feed that bad part of yourself then the bad's gonna come out uh, I don't know what happens when we die I'm not gonna pretend to know I don't think anybody does but I I, I respect the fact that everyone may believe something different and I'm totally okay with that you know, I, I might believe something different than you, and, and that's fine. That's just, you know, um, I, I'm hoping, like, heaven will be this, like, uh, a lot of guitars on the wall, you know, <laughs> and playing metal, <laughs> hoping it's something like that. Um, yeah, you're right. No, no cover charge. You don't have to hold Christian beliefs to not want to bring negative energy. In your yeah, that's true. Um yeah, and Mike Olson, you believe in a higher power, but that's the best you can describe it. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I, the, it's funny, you know, Don Henley, one of his lyrics, uh, and I can't remember the name of the song now, but one of the lyric lines is, you know, the more I know, the less I understand. And I, uh, I have become extremely humble in that regard over the years. I'm not super old. Well, I'm 45, I'll be 45 in uh, two months from now. But yeah, it's, um, you know, that's I might, I might do a, I might do like a live session on that uh, at some point in the future. You know, just if you guys want to talk about that, if that's something you want to dig deeper into, because I I really enjoy talking about that stuff. I really enjoy, and I like I said, you know, I can I have a good ability, and I'm not bragging, but it's you know of all the things I suck at, I have a really good ability to look at someone's point of view and understand why they think that way, why they believe that way. It's the same with politics. I, I'm, not, I'm not into politics. I am, I am a registered independent in the United States of America. I'm not registered Republican. I'm not registered Democrat. I've got really close friends that are hardcore both. And I can understand why, I can understand their issues, right? Why they feel a certain way and I can understand their issues. And so I, I understand, I get that. But anyway, um, project bass player, Messianic Jew. Yes, I, I do know that about you, dude. I remember you uh, left me a message one time uh, asking about one of the songs, the perspective of it, I think. Anyway, it was a long time ago, man. Oh, Charles, Noise is the Nightwish song. I thought you were referring to the, the people trying to sing too high. That's Noise. <laughs> I didn't realize Noise was a Nightwish song. <laughs> That's awesome. Let me just catch up real quick. Faceless, if you believe in God, you also believe in the devil. So why bash people who worship something else? Yeah. And hey, when I was growing up, I was certainly listening to that devil music. <laughs> that was so funny, man. Actually, you know what? Back, back in those days, I also listened to a lot of Christian metal. Um, There's a band called Deliverance, which I, I blatantly disagree with a lot of their stuff. Like looking back at some of their songs now. They, they bash, like, one of their songs bashes homosexuality, like, just blatantly bashes homosexuality, and I'm, I am, like, 110% okay with, with that sort of thing. I've got some, like, half, I'd say probably over 50% of our close friends are, are gay, and some of them are, are married, and they're happily married, and I'm okay with that, you know? So, yeah, I don't, um, I, I won't listen to anything that bashes that sort of thing either, but anyway, so, yeah, <clears throat> Excuse me. I also listened to, um, there was a death metal band called Mortification. And I, and they, man, that's a really good band. Their album, Scrolls of the Megaloth, that was an awesome album. And I saw them live, me and a good friend of mine. We went up there to see them live in Atlanta. This was probably back in like 93 or 94. And, uh, some band called the Jesus Freaks were opening for them, and we were we were connecting with another band called Antic, which I don't think they're around anymore. But yeah, Mortification was cool. So no cover charge. You think, think positive, be positive, and I'm hoping heaven has free beer. Yes, dude, that's what I'm hoping for, man. Metal and beer. <laughs> yep, that's uh, that's it. So guys, um, I'm just gonna throw my link in here one more time. Um, if you find something cool on the link I'm about to post, even if you don't grab it, if you guys don't mind also sharing this on your social media, the link that I'm typing in now, that's my
shop. And if you like, if you find a specific product on there, if you guys don't mind sharing that on your Facebook or whatever, and just saying, hey, this is this is a, a friend of mine, musician friend, and um, he's full time now. He's got to pay for his uh, mortgage and all that good stuff from his music. So please support him. <laughs> but no, I appreciate I appreciate all your support as well. So I got some comments coming in here, guys. Oh no way, dude! So Project Bass Player Steve Rowe is a friend of yours. Yeah. He's awesome, man. The, the mortification, they had some really, really cool stuff. No cover charge. What do I think about Avenge Sevenfold? Man, those, those are some talented dudes. Those are some really, really talent, talented guitar players, man. You know, so um, I've listened to some of their stuff. I'm, their music's not, mm, I don't know what it is. It's not grabbing me. But uh, but I do like their guitar harmonies. Yeah, and it is, it is much like Iron Maiden. You know, they they really play really well off of each other and harmonize. So yeah, they've got some they've got some good stuff. I'm sure if I if I dug into them, then you know, I'd probably like them more. Um, yeah, Charles. You know, you know, you know. Believe you believe what you believe, and uh, live and let live, so to speak. That's yeah, that's true, dude. <laughs> yep. Ah, uh, project bass player Striper. Yeah, you know, dude, Striper. Man, they had some. They had some really cool stuff. Uh, I've got one favorite song that really stuck out. I think it's called "Caught in the Middle," and it's just got a really just amazing opening riff that just kind of grabs you, man. Really, really good stuff. So, yeah. But yeah, guys, I posted my link up there to my shop. So please, please share that with folks, and that's a good way you can support me as well. Whether you're buying T-shirts, mugs, albums, whatever. Um, and I'm going to be adding new inventory to that. Uh, I have a designer that I work with, and he's he's coming up. Um, we're coming up with some new designs. I've got a brand new Keep It Metal design. I my shirts. I got to order that. I have not ordered that yet. It's my own shirt, and I need to order it. But uh, really cool dragon hand doing the metal logo, and it's it, you know I did away with the old design. You know I used to, and I'll probably still wear it in videos. I've got that little uh, yellow metal hand going up and just says keep it metal but i i did away with that temporarily for a while anyway because this new design is just so much cooler in my opinion but i'm gonna have more stuff coming out probably every couple of months in the shop so definitely you know definitely follow along and i'll be um i'll be providing links to that as well so yeah um the faceless asked me about sonata artica man i remember the first time i heard them i saw them in tampa they were here in Tampa many, many years ago. Uh, I want to say about 12 years ago. And I really just dug into Sonata. I loved them. There was nothing else like them. Over the past few years, uh, Tony Kako, the lead singer, I don't know, man. It's um, he's, he's kind of gotten, they kind of got off track. And he kind of became almost like a diva. So not cool, <laughs> but I saw them a few years ago. Yeah, this voice is amazing. I, I love Tony Kako's voice, amazing. But I'm just not a big fan of their later stuff. You know, it's kind of it's kind of like Metallica. Like I love Metallica, but eh, I could probably do away with the newer stuff. You know, <laughs> go back to what you were doing before. Uh, but anyway, but other than that, man, Sonata's first few albums, and I can't find their first uh, Sonata Artica. I can't find their first like two three albums on the streaming platforms. I don't know what happened to that. I don't know if it's a deal with the label or what, but anyway. So, guys, I'm gonna wrap things up if you guys don't have any more questions for me. Um, I've enjoyed hanging out, love doing this. I'm gonna try to do this at least like at least once a week, go live for you guys and just we'll hang out and chat about whatever. Um, I'll, have, I'll have a theme for each video, so I'll, and I'll try to give you guys more of a notice, you know, next time as well. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching, and uh, remember to catch my video, send me an angel, that will be posting on YouTube tomorrow, and until the next time, follow me on Instagram too, uh, to make sure you just go Jason Stallworth on Instagram, because that I'm always, post I just say that because I'm always posting videos on there, so yeah, do that. Guys, thank you so much, until next time, keep it metal.